It's 8 p.m. in Yaha, a town in the southernmost region of Thailand. This evening, like every other, these policemen are patrolling the streets. Originally formed to look out for signs of insurgent activity, in recent months they've had a second group of people in their sights. Young, unmarried couples. If they had been with girls other than their sisters, cousins or aunts, we would have asked the imam, the district chief or the village head to come and pick them up. Yaha's 15,000 people are predominantly Muslim. Local security forces and the town's mayor recently signed an agreement with local religious leaders to establish Hukum Pakat. Based on Sharia law, this decree allows security forces and volunteers to question young people who are flirting with each other. They do not have the power to take legal action against them, but can send them to the imam for lessons in morality. The decree is a rare restriction in a country that's seen as largely tolerant. Civil rights activists say it's unconstitutional. But in the three Muslim-majority provinces of southern Thailand, Sharia law has always coexisted with national laws and is invoked to address family issues, a vague definition that's enabled more conservative Muslims to justify the patrols. The current law does not prevent adolescents from mingling with each other, so what are we supposed to do? This is why we have to meet to resolve this problem. Friday prayers are underway at Yaha's mosque. The imam's powers go beyond religion. He's sometimes approached to resolve family issues, such as marital or inheritance disputes. With the new decree, he's also authorized to lecture young unmarried couples spotted by the patrols. Even though he's the moral backbone of the Hukum Pakat, he tries to play down its significance. Hukum Pakat is not the same thing as Sharia law. We do not force young people to marry, despite what the media says. No, no, we don't do that. Hukum Pakat is a tool to prevent young people from committing crimes. It is only applicable to Muslims. We want to be able to keep our children 100% on the path of Islam. That is all. The same message is being passed on to girls at a Quranic school near the mosque. Between prayers, they sum up the feelings of Yaha's people. Policy in our uh, public, in our area is better for women. Is more safe. Public safety is a priority for people in Thailand's deep south, a region where armed insurgents are still active. The three provinces located near Malaysia have been in a state of emergency decreed by their military rulers since 2004. At night, patrols scan neighborhoods for gangs, terrorists, and drug dealers. The Hukum Pakat is being seen as a last resort to rein in local youths looking for trouble. We established these rules after a major incident in which youths started shooting at each other. Anchana is based in the neighboring region of Patani, a stronghold for Islamist separatists. She is a human rights activist and one of the few people to have publicly opposed the way the moral code is being imposed. I don't believe everyone in Yaha district accepts the process of Hukubakat. Not only men, women, children, all participants in the village to uh, involved in the process. Young people were never asked what they thought of the rules and it's made them deeply distrustful of the authorities. Since Hukum Pakat was imposed, I haven't been back to Yaha. There are checkpoints to go there. It freaks me out. In some remote villages, when they catch a young couple, they force them to marry. 
this young Buddhist Muslim couple refuses to abide by the new restrictions. Flirting amongst boys and girls is only natural when we like each other. I don't agree with the rules because they're denying us our freedom. We love each other, so if the rules are imposed here, we'll run away together. Hukum Pakat has reportedly succeeded in driving down juvenile misdemeanors and is expected to be imposed elsewhere in Thailand's deep south, depriving young people of their carefree existence.